All right, guys. So I wanted to show you, um, for those of you who are able to safely get down on the ground and you want to work on knee flexion, improving knee flexion, this is a great way to do it. There's, there's other ways you can do it if you can't get on the ground. Um, but I was talking to somebody recently and I said I'd share this video and she was already getting on the ground. So here we go. Let's pretend for a second it's a right total knee replacement and I'm limited. I'm, my goal is I want to get to 90 degrees, but I'm not there yet. What do I do? If you get too aggressive, you know, our bodies are really amazing in the way they function. So if I try to push into flexion, right? I'm grabbing it and I've got the strap and I'm trying to do heel raises or heel slides, I mean. What's gonna happen is my brain is gonna say, hey, this doesn't feel good, this is dangerous, and my brain is gonna trigger a natural reflexive response to resist. It's gonna resist the flexion. And that's not gonna help you get to where you need to go. So what I found over the years was that if somebody is able to get on the floor, legs up on the couch. So pretend this is a couch, it's a treatment table right now, but pretend that's a couch. My legs are on the couch, or maybe it's an ottoman. You can do that also. Um, and so as I'm laying here, my legs are on the couch, they're comfortable, I can feel the support of the couch underneath my calf, which allows my quadricep muscle to relax. If this muscle is tight and firing to resist the motion, I'm never gonna be able to overpower it. So what we want is we want the quadricep to be soft, relaxed, totally calm. Now from this position, if I activate my hamstrings and my glutes, the way our brains and our bodies are designed is when my brain tells this muscle to get tight, reflexively it tells this muscle to relax. So what I do is I lay on my back, I get comfortable, maybe I have a magazine or a book or my phone, and I just, I lay in this position. And, and so the first minute or two, there's no real stretch on the knee. I'm just totally comfortable. I can do a couple of these little lifts, these little hip bridges to get my hamstring firing. And then I relax and then I slide the leg back a little bit and I'll do a couple more of these hamstring lifts, glute bridges, relax, maybe I'll go. Now I'm starting to get into the range where it's uncomfortable. It's not painful, but it's uncomfortable. From this position, again, I want to drive my heel down to the point where I'm almost lifting my hips up or I actually do lift my hips up. What's going on mechanically is the hamstring muscle behind the leg is actually grabbing the tibia and pulling the tibia down. That is the motion we need for flexion. That is what we need to bend the knee more. From here, if I want, if I can reach it, um, you know, if, if I had a rolling pin, you guys have seen the rolling pin massage. I can do my rolling pin massage in through here. I can use my hands just to massage this muscle. Uh, but the whole idea is gravity is helping me pull down. You guys have probably seen the videos where you put your feet on the wall and you let your feet slide down the wall. This is just a different way to do it. The problem with the feet on the wall is there's no, no sensation of support under the calf. So your quadricep muscle still has a tendency to want to resist that motion. But if I have something under the calf muscle to relax the leg, relax the knee, um, I find that patients are a lot more receptive and responsive to this position. So I'd spend maybe five to 10 minutes, 10 minutes at the absolute maximum. And that goes to another kind of topic that I've been discussing more lately. More isn't always better, you know? So like, let's say I do this and I do five minutes and I feel great. And I do 10 minutes and I feel good. But then I do 15 minutes and two hours later, my knee is more swollen and sore. That is your confirmation. 15 minutes is too much. Five minutes, probably too little. 10 minutes was just right. You know, and it'll vary a little bit day to day. If you're, you're sleeping better, you can tolerate more. If you're sleeping worse, you tolerate less. Um, but the goal is, 
you are with your knee 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You don't have to cram in 60 minutes of exercise every single day uh, in one hour. You can do two, three minutes, short episodes. You can do 10 minutes. If you do something and you're more swollen or more painful in an hour or two or even that night, it was too much. Your body's not ready for it. I want you to really pay attention to the response. I almost don't care what it feels like when you're doing it. It's how you feel after. If you do something that's painful, but you feel better later and you have better range of motion, you're on the right track. If you do something, you know, now that's painful and you feel worse later, you can't do it. You're just setting yourself back. You're putting barriers in your way. Um, for a lot of you, the reality is you're probably doing too much. Some of you probably not doing enough, but my goal for you guys today is to share some new strategies that'll help you find just the right amount. Guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. The more subscribers we get, the more people we can reach and the more people we can help. I love providing you guys with this free content and any feedback you have for me, I always appreciate it. I respond to every single comment. So thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I'll catch you on the next video.